we saw that the, the human suffering of women and girls was so tolerated, was so normalized, that it was an open secret in society. Sexual violence was so rampant, particularly in 2010, where there was a massive humanitarian crisis and 350,000 people died. And from all the regions of Somalia, everyone was flocking to Mogadishu for humanitarian aid. So you have mostly women with children in IDP camps and you have military vehicles parked outside, raping women left and right. And there weren't any service centers to support the victims. So that's how our first rape crisis center started. How young were the victims that you were helping? And, and, and what kind of structure was there for you? I mean, it seems like there was a lot of obstacles and also taboo associated with all of that. And so if you could give me an example. There was so much taboo to the point that the president at the time even released a press statement saying that rape does not happen in Somalia. Any organization speaking about this is bringing shame to the country. Our staff were arrested, harassed. Our centers were shut down. This was just a mere 10 years ago. There was no profile of what a survivor of sexual violence looked like in Somalia then, from a 70-year-old woman to a two-year-old child. Complete impunity. And I feel like of all the work that we've done, whether it's a piece of security, gender-based violence, human rights, education, the one sector that I can actually visibly see change is in this space, gender-based violence. We still have so far to go that we went from a place where you couldn't even talk about it, where there were no services available at all, to now having multiple service providers, where we have from a surge of 11% women and political participation to 24%, where we had the first Minister of Women and Human Rights, where we had this first sexual offenses bill being debated, where we had a conversation that actually acknowledges that this is happening in the country, and now trying to figure out what to do about it, as opposed to denying it. So that is tremendous progress. But uh, we've seen also incidents where action was also taken, uh, but uh, step back with legislation not really addressing it. Yeah. So the very sexual offenses bill that I'm celebrating from 2018 was just a month ago recalled and changed into the intercourse bill where the sexual offenses bill was trying to persecute rapists and prevent it. The sexual intercourse bill is essentially legalizing sexual violence and legalizing child marriage. It is a major setback. But I feel like we can't move forward unless we recognize where we came from. We're talking about a legal framework right now. Before we were talking about the same woman being served at our centers three times in a row. The same person, because we keep sending them back to the same environment that's not any more enabling, not any more progressive, not any more safer. But now we're talking about governing this. So we, we still have a very long way to go.